today is a showcase of my entire Orc army. This is a collection of models that I use when I want to entertain my opponent in an otherwise grim dark setting. There will be lots of pretty photos and videos along the way, and I'll even talk about the painting and the custom design of some of them. And if we're lucky, we might even score the odd impression from Gordon along the way. If you is a lucky git. With that, let's take a look at the army. My table isn't big enough to lay out the entire army for one shot and still have it look pretty. So instead, I'll take you on a tour of some of the different ways the army is comprised, such as speed freak buggies, feral beast snagger orcs, and larger mechs. It will be rude to start anywhere but with the big boss himself and some of the characters that support him. Gazgul Thracker has to be one of my favourite models that Games Workshop has produced. He's large and imposing and he stands in such an intimidating pose with huge weapons. Being so prominent and identifiable on the board is fitting for the Orcs where the biggest and baddest are in charge. A theme that will surface multiple times throughout the video is just how much fun you can have collecting an Orc army. With Space Marines and other factions, it can feel that you are held accountable to the law by the community, and the idea of creating your own vehicles and models isn't met with the same level of joy compared to the wacky Orc creations that you see surfacing in specific Orc forums. I built this model from the Necromonda Ambok kit to act as the big mech with the souped up shock attack gun during 9th edition. The idea of a weapon where almost all of the stats are randomised each time you fire it is just about the most orky thing you could have. This big mech with custom force field was created using the Warhammer Plus subscription mini intended for Age of Sigma fantasy orcs. A cool model but personally I prefer him with his new parts and dropped in the middle of the 41st millennium. There's a complete guide available on how I built and painted this model, I'll add a link in the description below if you're keen. Oh, and the truck. I have a few different trucks that I've kit bashed myself, but I think this one is probably my favourite. This has been looted from the Admech and has that Higgins boat iconic shape about it. It's a really fun and thematic way to send the squatter troops up the board into the thick of it. And I see you back there as well, Daniel Ricard Orc. One of my favourite Orc models and also one of my favourite videos that I've made. If you aren't into racing, that's okay. This model is designed to look like a McLaren F1 car with the added Lego helmet painted in the design of my favourite driver, Danny Rick. See, you can get away with this with Orcs, but if I made a Custodes Grav Tank based off the Scooby-Doo mystery van, well, it would be very out of place. I think I have at least one copy of every Orc model available, but in the interest of time, I won't show you every single one. Maybe we can check out a few more honourable mentions from the regular Orc characters before we move on. Also while I'm here, I'll quickly show off my knobs. Wait, you know what I mean. They are magnetised and are currently sporting close combat weapons with a variety of enemy scraps such as Tau Drones or Imperial Shields of Armour. The Orcs love to loot gubbins! Ooh, now do it as Michael Caine. Orcs love to loot gubbins. Not many people know that. Thank you, Gordon. Shifting gears now, see what I did there? Such a fun way to play Orcs is fast paced, little thought and carefree. This photo of my models captures what I imagine it must look like to be on the receiving end of buggies on turn one. Absolute madness. These buggies were the reason I jumped from painting the occasional mini for relaxation to actually starting an army. Some backstory here, I used painting as a healthy avenue to unwind from stress at work. With little kids, I wanted something quiet that I could spend time on at home whilst they slept. When the orc buggies were announced, I purchased all six in one hit and then slowly worked my way through painting them. These were some of the very first models I painted, but I look back on them now and I'm still really happy with how they turned out. I experimented with some colour shift paint and I was always playing around with damage effects, weathering powders and using an airbrush for the first time. The race car is painted up in the colours of the late 90s Jordan F1 team, and that squib buggy is full of character. Models just piled on top of one another and you can picture it bouncing across terrain senselessly with squigs launching in all directions. 
I wish I could have sat around the meeting table the day that they flipped the whiteboard over and said, all right, six buggies, start throwing ideas at me. And people just started yelling absurd ideas. I love this concept of a downed fighter jet with some wheels slapped on. That's fantastic. And the rules reflected it as I would straight line my way across the table and slam the drill nose into something solid. That grainy looking finish you can see on some of them is the matte varnish spray. I've learned that no matter how well you shake the can and if the weather conditions are perfect, you are still at the mercy of Gork, or possibly Mork, if it's going to work out how you want for the model. Or if this model that you've invested so much time in is now going to look a little funky. Now either I don't coat them or instead I brush it on and feel that I can achieve the result that I want. Now I didn't need to kit bash any of these buggies because they already look like they've been looted from available scrap. But one model that I did want was a custom war boss on bike. I have a dozen regular looking bikes already and if this orc was to lead them into battle, he needed something special. I made this model before the release of the Necromunda bikes, otherwise I think I would have used one of them instead. But there is something special about taking a beaky bike and charging it back into their own lines. Ah uh, yes, more of a lush forest and green theme for this backdrop, this must mean we've discovered the feral and savage orcs. Now this idea on paper probably didn't do too much for me. Orcs that look like they belong more in a fantasy setting? Not really my cup of tea. Then I saw the models they were releasing. Wow, I had to have them all. Those big rigs took me forever to paint because of the insane amount of detail. I was exhausted when I finally finished them, but as far as centerpiece display models for an army of colour and character, not much else can compare. I love them. If you like the way that I've painted these orc beast snagger boys, well I've recently put a video up where not only do I go through step by step how I painted them, but it's also an epic collaboration with MT Speedcrafts as he builds a beautiful diorama for them. I can't remember who it was to give them credit, but I saw the idea of the purple recess areas of the red squig hide and I had to have it as well. As if they weren't alien enough, have some more vibrant colours thrown in, sure. The boss on Squigasaur is such a dynamic model and he deserves to ride atop a great white squig. This is a model that if I want to explain to someone what it meant when I say that I paint little toys, I show them something like this. It's dark and ominous, but then has a fun cartoony 90s street shark feel to it. And this usually gets a chuckle out of people. Orcs are such a fantastic beginner's army. They are forgiving with your painting because very little about their existence is neat and tidy. If you look closely, I've made plenty of mistakes, but I also have the luxury of being able to bury most of them underneath weathering, grime, rust, battle damage, blood, and slime. I've only played a handful of competitive tournaments and I like to take orcs. I can create a goofy fun list and not worry about winning or losing because I know I can get a laugh out of whoever is on the opposite side of the table from me. I loved when I would be halfway through planning some creative strategic maneuver only to catch myself and go, nah, the orcs wouldn't do that, I shall charge. Strategies for filthy humies, just charge! Ooh, now do Sean Connery. The funny thing is, orc tactics boil down to charging at every opportunity. Thank you. But what else do orcs have? That's right, they've also got some larger toys. They do come a lot bigger than this, but this is the largest orc model that I own, and it's great because it also doubles as a lunchbox for my kids. Creating this video is just making me want to leave them all out of the cupboard and get some games in with friends and the tiny humans. And finally, the orc flyers. As a single kit, this has to be one of the best you can get your hands on as an orc player. You make whichever variant you want and then you're left over with an obscene amount of spare parts that you can use for your next kit bash model design. The majority of my flyers are eBay rescues. They were in rough shape with some damage, cracking paint and appeared to have been chewed on by the family pet. But remember, this is perfect for an orc collector. So a fresh coat of paint and add some weathering and grime to the damaged areas and they look right at home. If you're looking at breaking into the hobby by picking up secondhand models, then consider orcs for this reason. So what do you think of my orc army? 
please just take into consideration this was my entry into the hobby, so there were plenty of mistakes made along the way as I was starting my painting journey. The bright yellow kitty litter and sand bases tend to offend some viewers, but these were my first models and I don't want to change them now. I like to see the journey I've been on. Also, special thanks to Dingles for taking the amazing photos. I'm blown away. The scenes you came up with made me feel like I was flicking through a copy of White Dwarf and you've helped me showcase something that's important to me without it being presented from my potato camera. Thanks to my kids for laughing at my orcs and encouraging me to paint more. What's next? Well, I've got plenty of painting guides still on the way, but I am starting to run out of armies that I can showcase. We could always take a cheeky peek at my Chaos Knights. Or perhaps we can smooth talk Gordon into showing us his Raven Guard and his Astra Militarum. If you are on a roll and you'd like to see some more army showcases, well, I have my custom high fleet of frozen bugs for you to check out. Or perhaps you prefer some gifts, the Nurgle kind, with my gruesome Death Guard army. Either way, enjoy, have fun, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.